Do you know what design is? Not industrial design, not UX design, not product design, just design in general. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm going to give you my take on what design is in 2020 and see maybe how you can benefit from even knowing just a little bit of design and see the world from a different perspective. This is not about a specific design career in ID or UX. I have already covered that in a different video, link up here and description down below. What I want to tell you all about is to explain design from a designer's perspective, but in a more generic manner. But first, I have a few clips to show you. Design is your gift. Design is the way. You observe problems from the inside out rather than the outside in. Maybe you are like me. Sometimes when I was watching some of these videos, I feel like I'm looking at a, a, a piece of art at a museum. It's good. It's beautiful. Very powerful. Like how? I don't know. It's good. So just to be clear, this is not another one of those videos. <laughs> I'm here to share something that is more practical or actionable, I would say. Get ready and let's dive right in. <sighs> Design really has two parts, the thinking and the craft. Great designers are inherently super good at both thinking and craft so that they can design amazing things that you love. They use design thinking to guide how you will use a product and use craft to decide how you feel about a product. Let's start with thinking. This thinking or design thinking in my opinion is the, the logical, the more objective, more rational side of design. You can attribute a reason to it. This is also the part that you can adopt and use in your day-to-day -day life, no matter who you are or what you do. Design thinking is iterative and empathetic. Remember these two key elements, iterative and empathetic. You really need both to say you have design thinking under your belt. You might think only designers have and use design thinking. Yes, we use it a lot, but this is not an either or situation. It's a continuum. Designers are surely more iterative and empathetic, sitting on the far end of a continuum. You don't have to go that extreme, just have a little or some, you'll be in a pretty good shape. Being iterative means you can go through many iterations, trials or cycles. The more times you go through, the better. Of course, it's impossible to go through infinite numbers of iterations. A good rule of thumb would be five iterations. That will give you something very decent. Being empathetic means you understand from other people's perspective. Putting yourself in other people's shoes it's not about what you want, but what other people want. You need both elements to successfully reach the goal that you have in mind. Let me just give you a very classic design example. Designing a chair for my mom, let's say. First, be empathetic. Put myself in other people's shoes. Who is the other? The person who will be using this chair? My mom, right? I need to understand my mom. Okay, she likes a chair with cushion, headrest, but no armrest. I personally love to have armrest, but hey, it's for her, so keep it no armrest for this chair. Knowing this information, I make chair V1 for her. She tried it and told me the chair is too low, so it's hard for her to get up. Also, her back hurts after sitting for 10 minutes. Then again, to be empathetic, I listen to her feedback and get to know what she likes and doesn't like. Now it's time to be iterative. I will incorporate her feedback. Maybe raise the height of the chair so it's easier for her to get up and curve the back rest more to provide more lumbar support for her back. So I created chair V2. The rest of the story will be repeating the same process. I listen, I create a new version and I test again to really reinforce this feedback loop. Then chair V10 will be something for sure she loves to use every day to drink her morning coffee. It's very similar to science in many ways. You have a hypothesis you want to validate and you keep experimenting until you find the answer. That's why it's very logical. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Empathy and iteration really go hand in hand. 
If you don't have empathy, you either don't have anything to iterate on, or the iteration you have does not help the goal. It's really about using empathy and iteration to refine your idea, your steps, your process over, over, and over. Constantly improving, optimizing, streamlining to get to something that works great. Bad products may go through iterations once or twice max, and whoever made them didn't think or even care about how users will use them. That's why some of these products or services are not thoughtful enough. They are really lacking that iterative and empathetic thinking in the development process. Next is craft. The craftsmanship, the ability, the skill to create high quality work. These days, it has a lot to do with how things look because it's very direct, very visual, it's your first impression, it's your first touch point. The iPhone corner looks very smooth. The texture feels great when you're holding the phone. The curvature on Tesla's exterior is very slick. All these give us a lot of emotional appeal to the product. It's so cool, so beautiful, so cute. That's what bonds us with the product. Creating a code of Tesla and making their followers say, I love Elon Musk, 10 p.m. every night before bed. Just kidding, but seriously, one big reason designers are designers is that they have the crafting skills to polish the details, to pick out an eye-catching color, to pair two materials, to decide where to place items. I'm not telling you to become a craftsman, not at all, but certainly it's good to develop a keen eye, have a good taste, to appreciate craft more. Only and only when more and more people start to see and get excited about the beauty in craftsmanship. We are encouraged to pour our heart as designers, to finesse on those fine details. Then we can really bring more surprise and delight to everyone. Just imagine a world that all the products and services have gone through many iterations. V5, V6, V7, or V10, V20. There will be less issues with the product that we use, less product recall, less time reading the instruction manual because it's so easy to use. On the top of that, imagine everyone has empathies for each other. They are thinking, considering, and caring about one another. We can see more smiles, more happiness, more fun. There will be less arguments, less conflicts, and less negativities. Then, if you add craft on the top of this already pretty awesome sounding world, you can discover more beauty, more order, more delicacy in the facade of a building, home decorations, or even your winter 2020 outfit. Ooh, I like your outfit. Looking good. It's truly a pretty awesome world, isn't it? That's why I think design is really for everyone and it's related to everyday life. Everybody can and should have some design thinking and craft and use them from time to time to optimize your investment strategy, to decorate your house, or even to cook a better meal. All right guys, that's what I think design is at this point in time in 2020. Does that help? Does it give you some idea of what design is, what it can do, and how it can maybe help you in your life? Let me know in the comment section down below what you want to use design to do in your day-to-day -day life. I'll make sure to add on to your brilliant ideas. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you find some useful and valuable information in this video. If so, give a big push to that like button for that awesome blue to show up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. This will tremendously help motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!